Hello and welcome back to my video series where I work through the challenges of my book, The C Sharp Player's Guide. This week, we're going to start on the first challenge in the final battle. This is a huge challenge when you assemble all the parts that are necessary. So expect it to take some time. Um, it's going to take me time to do it. Um, and yeah, so we're going to start with an overview of the program we're making. And then we'll look at the two pathways you've got when, when doing this. And finally, we'll dive into the first final battle challenge in this video. So let's take a look at what we're actually building here in the final battle. I think this picture right here does a pretty good job at capturing the concept. What we're building here is a slice of a turn-based combat game like you find in a lot of JRPGs. Uh, for example, Final Fantasy VII. Uh, had something a lot like this. Paper Mario has something like this. There's a lot of games out there that have this type of like turn-based uh, combat in an RPG setting. So we're not doing anything too novel in terms of gameplay, but that's okay. This is all an exercise to help us wrap our minds around building. Honestly, this is this is a pretty substantial challenge, and I think that anybody who has experience programming could probably vouch for that statement. That this is. This is, there's a lot of meat to this. It's pretty substantial. So when you get done with this, you're going to have something awesome to show for it, I think. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, the, the basic gist, though, here is that there's two teams. Both of them are made up of characters. You can see this is the first team. This is like the heroes, the good guys. These are the bad guys. So there's two different teams. They each have a set of characters that are fighting it out. Each character is going to get a turn to perform an action, which is then resolved by the game. So for example, the simplest action that a character could do is to do nothing, skip their turn. And obviously that's not a very exciting action, but it is something to do. And it's actually the first one we're gonna do to kind of start building out the system. But obviously doing nothing doesn't advance the game at all. So the, most of the time we're not gonna be doing nothing. The most common type of action is an attack. So all the characters have some sort of like basic attack that they can perform that they always have no matter what. And I, I've i made these icons here, this little fist icon, that's like a punch attack. So these, some of these characters have this like punch attack that they can always do. Um, these other characters, these two skeletons have their attack isn't punch, it's a bone crunch attack. And the mechanics of bone crunch are a little different than punch. So, but each of the characters have some sort of basic attack that they can always do no matter what. And yeah, so by the time we're done with this, though, we're also the characters are also going to have equipment uh, like this bow right here that Vin Fletcher has or the sword uh, or this little bony dagger thing that they have that these that give the characters an extra attack. So some of the attacks could come from equipment that the characters have equipped that these those attacks are usually they're kind of special attacks. They're usually more powerful um, but you have to equip the, the item in order to use it, maybe. And yeah, so, but that equipping equipping gear is another action that a player might take. And of course, we also have, uh, the party has like an inventory uh, that they can, items that are usable during the game. So like this potion here, like that's, that's an action. So the, these are kind of, in this picture, I tried to illustrate like this Vin Fletcher character has the option of, shooting his bow, punching, or using a potion. And he happens to be, like, the way I've illustrated this, that's what he's doing, which is probably good, because his health is very low. Um, so all the characters have health, and when their health reaches zero, the character is eliminated. When all of the characters on a team's health reaches zero, then that team loses and the other team wins. Um, I, I should I should point out that the characters themselves don't pick the actions. There is a player in charge of each team, and the player picks the actions for the character. So if there's, you know, if player one is in charge of this team, um, player one would pick an action from the available options. And, you know, in this case, maybe use a potion here. Use the sword to attack a specific character. Uh, or maybe just the first one in the list or whatever. Um, so you you know it'll pick an action and then player two in charge of this will pick an action for 
each of their characters in turn as well. The, let's see, what else is there? Uh, uh, so there's two, there are going to be two kinds of players. There's going to be human players, and there's going to be like a computer player, an AI player. So we're going to have to get into quite a bit of stuff there. For the human side, we're going to have to handle, do a lot of like text parsing and like input handling, which is something we've done quite a bit of in the book already. So that shouldn't be too new or wild or crazy. Um, but we're also going to be doing a little bit of AI. Um, it's not anything too fancy. We're not doing machine learning or anything like that, but we're just going to write up some some code to allow a computer player to pick pick some actions with with some wisdom, you know, to use a potion if they've got it when their health is low and that kind of stuff. So some basic rules to give the human somebody to play against without having to make it to a two human game. So... That's probably about it in terms of summary, but I do I just want to say once again, this is a really big challenge. So we're going to like, this is, if you look up all the parts, like this is an 18 part challenge. If you do them all, and we'll talk about that in a second, you don't have to do them all, but this is, this is pretty substantial, but we're just going to take it one step at a time. We'll work through it all. And as I'm doing these videos, I will, I'll make sure that I'm explaining to you guys, like my thought process, my thinking, like why I'm you making a class for this and not for that and, and all that kind of stuff. So again like this is a pretty unfiltered just raw like straightforward this is this is the path i'm going down and why and we'll just talk through the challenges as they arise it i have solved this before but it has been a while and i've forgotten a lot of the little details so we'll hopefully that puts me in not a totally beginner mindset on this but hopefully a little more you know i'm not just remembering what i did and i think at the end of this you'll be able to look compare the solution we make in this video, these several videos, compared to the solution online that I had, and we'll see some pretty big differences, I'll bet. So it's big enough that we're likely to see some pretty big differences. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is that there's two pathways here. I'm going to scroll back up here to this part that talks about these two different pathways. There's 18 parts to this challenge. I don't expect you to do all 18 of them. Um, there's nine <clears throat> challenges that are like the core path, the, the core challenges that kind of build the foundation of the game. And then there's not, there's nine others that are like expansions and you can't like the expansions are largely independent. You could kind of largely pick and choose which ones of those you want to do, but, but they all kind of assume you've got this basic game already in place. So you can either build out the core game that that's this core path. That's your, your first possibility build out the core path, which means doing all nine of those core challenges, and then two, only two of the expansion challenges. The, the second one is the expansion path. And that is instead of trying to build out all of the core stuff, you just go get my solution online. Um, or perhaps you, um, well, yeah, I, anyway, you go get my, my solution online and start there and then do a whole bunch of these expansion challenges. It says seven of them. So you still have some freedom in, in what you choose. You can do either one that you feel like you'd prefer. Like there's, <laughs> either of these is gonna get you a ton of experience building a very substantial program. Don't feel like you need to do all 18. I have seen a lot of people who do all 18 a lot of times when people get to this point where they, you know, they're working through this stuff and they've, they've got mostly, you know, they built up these skills through the whole book. They're, they're hungry to, to do all 18, but do not feel like you need to do all 18. Either of these pathways is completely legitimate. If you are, I just want to say this, if you're, if you're kind of at a point where you're like, I'm just not comfortable with object oriented programming like i don't know how to i don't know when i should be making an interface i don't know when i should be making a class i don't like I, i'm having a hard time understanding like when i should be making instances and and all this different stuff i i would maybe in that case lean toward just getting my my code and starting from there and doing the expansion path instead and the reasoning for that is that it gives you like the, the code that I've got there all starts with like all of these interfaces and base classes and things like that are already built in there. And so you don't have to like 
think through and make all these decisions. You're able to just kind of see what's there and get a feel for working in an existing object oriented system and, and just augmenting it. And I think that that goes a really, really long way. So if, if you're, if you're still not super comfortable with object oriented design, then that, I mean, that is a, that's a whole other skill that deserves a whole other book besides this book, maybe, maybe 10 other books. So I, like, don't feel bad if you're still like, I'm just not sure when I should be making classes, when I should be using an interface, when I should be using a struct, when I should do, you know, inheritance or whatever it is, all these different things. Like, don't, don't stress yourself out over that too much. It is the kind of thing that just, it comes with experience and practice and there are rules that you can learn, but um, it, it is a whole other skill beyond just the basics of, of C-sharp programming. So... I do think that if you're if you're still feeling pretty uncomfortable with object oriented programming, that would be my suggestion is start with that expansion path. I know people feel like, well, but then I don't know if I get that exposure for the core stuff. And I think that's legitimate too. And if you I, I think that the core path will force you to work in to work and think in objects. So and that's not a bad thing either, but you may it just may take longer. And I think that's totally fine. It, it is just fine for it to take longer. So, um, yeah, so I think that, I think that about kind of captures this, but like I said, don't like the intent isn't to do all 18, though. I have seen a lot of people do it. You, you really can kind of pick and choose your pathways here and, and still get full credit for finishing the book. You'll still get to level 10. You'll still get your experience points and all that stuff. So yeah. All right, with that, let's just kind of dive into this. I'm going to come down here, and in this video, we're only going to go through this first challenge. And just to kind of, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot in here. It's, this challenge is deceptively complex. It'll require building out enough of the game's foundation to get two characters taking turns in the loop. And this, like, you can see down here, like, this is kind of the expected output. Like, this is what I think we'll see at the end of this. But the, this bulleted list of items covers a ton of ground. Um, so th this is where we're building the foundation and there's a lot here. So let's just kind of go through these. So the game, these represent characters with a name and the ability to take a turn. We'll change that a little bit later. We need a skeleton character and its name should be skeleton. The game should be able to represent a party with a collection of characters. So there's this concept of a party. The game should be able to run a battle composed of two parties. So there, this is like like layer upon layer. There's characters, and then there's parties that have characters, and there's a battle that has parties. And a battle needs to run a series of rounds. So there's another concept. So I'm already, in terms of like design, I'm already identifying things that, that sound like a concept that is part of the game. And those concepts are likely to be classes. So as I'm kind of going through this, I'm seeing these things that feel like Maybe maybe this is a, a concept. So series of rounds where each character in the party can take a turn. And before a character takes their turn, the game reports who's, to the user whose turn it is. The only action the game needs to support at this point is the action of doing nothing, skipping a turn. This action is done by displaying text about doing nothing, resting, or skipping a turn in the console window. For example, skeleton did nothing. And then the game needs to be able to run a battle with a single skeleton in both parties. And it should just go back and forth doing, taking turns. So there's a couple of optional things here that I think we will probably try to do. But that is the summary. So I'm going to scoot this aside. I can still see it. You guys will be able to because it's off on a different screen. And let's just kind of get into this. Now, in the past, I have done... CRC cards, and I've pulled up um, Adobe Illustrator, so I've got my little card drawings and done that. I'm gonna I'm gonna try something a little different here, and I'm gonna do kind of some, some some like prototyping in code. I think this is I've used this in the past also for. Sorry, I'm doing two things at once here. I've I've done this in the past, uh, and it's it's pretty successful. It's a good way to just kind of sort of outline the, the elements that you think you're going to have and, and kind of do so in code without like committing to it being the final, final version. So this is yet another tool that you could use 
for thinking through objects and classes and some things like that, like the CRC cards are. There's a lot of different tools that you can use for this kind of stuff. Um, you, you need to just kind of find a, a, a scheme or a set of tools that you feel like helps helps you and just, just go with it. But so I'll, I'll kind of show you like a, this little like, it's almost like sketching in code. All right, let's see. So I'm making a new project. This is called the final battle. I'm wondering if I've already got a repository called this. So we'll see. It's not complaining right now. We'll do .NET 6. We'll create this. I didn't complain about the name yet. So, so far, so good. All right. And I'm going to make the text here a little bigger. Give ourselves a little more space here so I can show it on the screen. Um, I'm going to leave this hello world up here for a moment. And then we're going to, okay. So now we're going to just kind of start talking through the code here. So the first bullet point is the game needs to be able to represent characters with a name and, and able to take a turn. So that's, that kind of gives us the definition of what a character should be. It actually almost gives away too much of the answer. It kind of just tells us. We need characters and characters need names and the ability to take a turn. So in my mind, that sounds like a character class. Uh, very often the requirements are way harder to like. Very often the, the, the requirements are way harder to like turn into code than this, that one sentence there, which kind of tells us very directly. So it should have a name, the ability to take a turn. So it should have, let's, I mean, I don't know if we need, I don't know if we need a setter on that, but we'll, we'll give it a name and we will take a turn. So that, the and able to take a turn sounds like a method. And I don't know, like, this needs to do something. I don't know what yet. We'll figure that out later. But the, our character class may look something like this. This is a very, like I said, we're, it's like we're sketching. Like imagine you're drawing. You just do these really high level um, kind of, <laughs> they're, they're gestures at this point. Uh, so we just want to keep it as simple as possible right now while still kind of saying, well, we're pro it, we might have a character class and it might look like this. Um, we're going to ignore, for example, the fact that this has a warning and this says, like the, the, the suggestions that we could do on both of these. We'll worry about that later. Um, so a character class, and then the game should be able to have skeleton characters with the name skeleton. So, <coughs> excuse me. To me, that sounds like maybe, maybe it's this. Maybe we have a skeleton character that, a skeleton class that derives from character. I don't know if we need it to be more than that yet. So that like skeletons are characters. This says it needs it needs the name skeleton. So we'll have to do something about the name because uh, right now this name is not set up. But we can deal with that later. So we might have a skeleton class, and then with the game should be able to represent a party with a collection of characters. So I, that sounds like a party class to me. And this needs a collection of characters. So. Maybe, maybe that's just a list of characters. I don't know that that needs to be settable either. In fact, I kind of think we maybe specifically wanted to not be settable. But, but so that might be the party class. And then let's see, we need a battle composed of two parties. So here we go, public class and battle. And this will have a party for the heroes and a party for the monsters, a public party heroes. Heroes and monsters. So before a character takes a turn, the game should report to the user whose turn it is. For example, it's skeleton's turn. Oh, wait, I, I'm jumping ahead. Well, I'm halfway jumping ahead. So a battle needs to run a series of rounds where each player. So we need something that's going to run the battle. So maybe that's a, a public, oh wait, maybe that's a run method. And again, I, I don't know what that 
the details of that looks like, but maybe this is the thing that actually runs runs uh, the battle to completion at least. And let's see. So before a character takes a turn, their game should report to the user whose turn it is. I, I'm not going to worry about that at this like sketch level. Um, the only action the game needs to support at this point is the action of doing nothing. So, um, this is introducing this notion of action. So somehow we need to be able to, and yeah, so somehow we need to be able to represent actions. So I'm going to like, this seems very abstract. I'm going to make an interface in this case for an I action. And but this probably needs to like, you probably need to be able to have an action run. So maybe this has like a void run. Maybe that's it. And then um, we will have implementations of this. So this might be for now, maybe this is like a, I don't know, like a do, do nothing action. Of course, it's not going to like that that's not implemented, but we can do that. seems okay for now so we'll have as we go like an attack will be a different type of action uh like use a potion will be a type of action uh, equipping gear will be a type of action so we'll get other actions here and then so this so somewhere we're gonna need so maybe maybe this the character needs to be able to say take turn and needs to be able to have be able to return the action that the character chose I don't need it. it doesn't compile right now that's what it's complaining about so i'm not returning anything that's okay right now this level <laughs> we're okay with it not compiling um so the game let's see the only action the game needs to support at this point is the action of doing nothing the action is done by displaying text about doing nothing resting or skipping a turn in the console window and then the game must be able to run a battle with a single skeleton and both the hero and the monster party at this point the two skeletons should do nothing repeatedly and the game might look like that okay so I just kind of threw that together and I think there's probably a lot of other ways we could do this. Um, but I actually think I'm mostly okay with this. And if, and if we had CRC cards, like we would, we would have a card for character. We'd have a card for skeleton. We'd have a card for party. We'd have a card for battle. We'd have a card for I action and for this do nothing action. Like we, we could have done this in CRC cards just fine. And there's a lot of other tools out there that people will use. Um, I have also very often just sketched boxes for these things on paper or whiteboard. That's actually my typical go-to option. But this set of classes and the instances that we'll create here in a second feels like a fairly reasonable starting point to me. And there's a lot of details that we probably, that are probably not right here. And we're just, we're like, for what we're doing right now, it makes a lot of sense to just say, let's just move forward with it and we will fix the details as we go. Uh, there, there's no, that's the, that's the um, interesting and maybe sad part of like this design stuff is it's, it's, it is good to have a plan going into it to feel like, you know, where you're going, but this type of stuff is we don't know what the details are all going to look like until we have a finished solution. And that means that everything we've done, everything we've done until we have like this final working solution is a guess about what it might be. So we need to be willing to adapt the plan. So uh, our plan, we've got a plan for now. <laughs> We're going to go something, something like this right here. And then we will just see where it goes, knowing we're probably going to make a whole lot of little changes. But it's it's just really hard at this point to like really anticipate what exactly all those changes are going to need to be. So the only piece we're the, the biggest piece we're actually missing here is is creating a battle and running it. And we could we could go ahead and start doing that. So we can you know battle equals new battle. And so, okay, so battle dot 
Ron. Poof, we're done. Uh, so the battle is going to have to know about, like, it's got, let's see, where did that go? The battle has to know about two parties. And somehow this battle has to become aware of the two parties that exist. Now, in, if you go back and look in the book, uh, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to do this really quick. Cause I think this is a good reminder, especially for people who are still kind of, you know, not feeling super confident in their object oriented design skills is there's a section that's called how to collaborate. Obviously in order for like, we can create two objects. We like, we can create in this case, a, like a, a battle class, which we, we actually just wrote that, you know, new battle. Um, and we can create a party or two point in this case, we need two parties and somehow the battle has to be aware of the two parties. And so somehow they, they need to like, at least in this case, in this case, they don't have to know about each other, but the battle has to know about the parties. And for that matter, we kind of had this problem at a second level, which is the parties have to know about the characters. So how do we, how do we get two objects to be introduced to each other? How do we allow one object to find out about a second one so that it can actually use it? It can actually call its methods and, and, and stuff like that. And there are several options. This first one here is the most direct. And that is you just, you just use the new keyword. You just say new whatever and poof, now you've got a reference to that thing. In fact, when you call a constructor with new, you are the first thing in the world that knows where to find this guy. So, and all objects will always be created with new. I probably shouldn't totally say that. Like, for example, you can invoke a constructor using reflection and some things like that. So, but, but by and large, everything's created with the new keyword, at, you know, at some point. So that will create a new object and that is the simplest way to do it. So I'm going to scoot this aside here for just a second. And like, so for example, I could come into this constructor, the battle needs to know about the monster party and the hero party. And I could, the, the simplest thing we could possibly do here is just say heroes equals new party. We're done. Um, monsters equals new party, party, party. We're done. Like there it is. We've got the heroes and the monsters both ready to go. They got their parties. And in fact, we could even come into this party class and we could do a similar thing here. Public make a constructor and we could say characters equals new list of character. And then we, so we can just say characters add new skeleton. And there we go. Now we've got the parties we got when we make a battle the battle will just go off and make new parties and when we say make a new party then the party says well i'm going to make a new list and furthermore i'm going to add in a skeleton to it and now we have like this is actually kind of what the challenge uh dictates is we have a battle with two parties and each party has a single skeleton in it so this actually like what we've got here actually checks all the boxes as far as that requirement is concerned But it does have some, it does have some other limitations. Cause for example, the way this is right now, there is no way to create a party you with any other configuration of characters. Um, and, and very soon we're going to want to have, to be able to like, we're going to want to be able to like make a party that has the, 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 the true programmer. That's like the hero of this game or, you know, the, the other characters that are in it. And it isn't just a skeleton every time. So we could leave it this way for now, but I'm actually going to probably not do that. So let's look at our other options here. So aside from just calling a constructor with new, what else could we do? Well, this is, this is our, this is like the usual, like best alternative. It isn't the only option, um, but, but. A, a second good tool we have is somebody else creates it and hands it to us. Um, and so we, we get, we're told about it when we're created. So for example, what we could do here is we could, um, well, let, let me, let's see. 
we could come up here and we could do something like we have a starting character. And, uh, and then right here, we can say new skeleton and new skeleton. So now, now the party class isn't like directly attached to, it must have a skeleton. You can, we could create a party using any single character that we want. We could take this a step farther. We could, we could say, you know, we could, we could pass in a second parameter with another one, and then we could do characters dot add second characters. So we could do that. And like we could, we could add in many, um, of course now, like we don't necessarily want right now a, a party that, that demands to, like in this case, it, it, we're demanding there's two characters. We could make these nullable and then, you know, say if starting character is not null, add it. If second character is not null, then add it. And now down here, we could, if we wanted to, we could pass in null. But this is this is kind of ugly code, right? Like to just be passing in null, like if we, because how, like we, in, like taking this to its logical conclusion, we would have to say, what is the most number of characters we might possibly want? in a party to start. And I don't know what the answer to that is, but I think if you look at a lot of the, these like RPG combat systems, I don't think, I don't know, it, restricting it to three or anything less than three would really be crazy. But I really think these games have a tendency to end up in some cases with five or six or eight. Like that's not uncommon. So we would need, we would need to have, you know, a whole lot more. First character, second character, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever that maximum is. And then in all these places where we're doing stuff, we would have to say, if we've only got one, we'd have to say new skeleton, comma, null, comma, null, comma, null, comma, null, comma, null, to like fill in all of those. That's kind of silly. So rather than that, we we could, a couple options here. Like the, I think the the alternative is, let's just pass in a collection of the, the, the starting characters. Um, and one thing we could do with that is we could do... Um, use this params keyword, which gives us, you know, a, a variable number of uh, characters. And then what we can do here is we can just say for each character, character in starting characters, let's make that plural, uh, characters dot add character. So there, now we we can um, skip that. But if we wanted to add in two skeletons, three skeleton, now we have that flexibility. We can do one or two or three and it's fine. Um, and it will, the compiler takes this and packs it up into an array and, and calls the method with an array, which this guy gets. So I like the, this direction. I like having that flexibility of what we can have any number of characters. Um, one slight variation that we could do here while I'm looking at it is we could do something like we're going to use some link stuff here, which is something we've learned about since the last boss battle, but we can just say dot to list. So this will take that array and it'll just turn it into a list, a new list which is what this is expecting. And now we've got this list. So that's simpler code. Um, so I, I'm, I actually, like I, there's a lot that I like about this approach. There's one thing I don't like, and that is that there isn't, there isn't a way to do something like, like I have to like, the way this is, I either have to list out my items one at a time, or I have to give it an array. I like I can I, I could call this with new character, new skeleton. Like I can, I can call it that way, um, and then the compiler doesn't have to switch it to an array. But I like there's a like I would actually prefer, like 
What if I ha want to? What if I want to use a list here? Like in this case, in this case, this doesn't work because a list can't just be converted into an array. So another possibility here is that I could use an IE enumerable, which is the most like fundamental, most fundamental, uh, Collection type, like it, it really all it does is it allows us to, to just like enumerate the characters that are in there, which is all we need to do in order to like go through them all and grab them all and put them all in a list that we were making here. So this code still works, and now I have more flexibility. However, what I don't have is the ability to call this with like a variable number of arguments. So we've lost that by doing that, and it's okay for us to pick one flavor or the other. I generally feel like this style is a bit more flexible than this. But we, we actually, we have the option to say, um, to do both, why not both? And we can actually, we ought to be able to just call this call, uh, well, that's going to be. We should be able to call that other constructor. The catch is we need to cast it because otherwise, if we don't if we don't do this cast, then this is this is going to say, "Hey, you're calling this constructor," because the compiler is going to find the best fit, um, the the best fit method, or in this case, constructor, which is really just a type of method. It's going to do the best the best fit method and there's like two overloads here and since this one requires an array and this one is an enumerable given that we're giving it we're supplying an array it will it will say okay then this is the one i'm going to call not this one so by casting it to an enumerable if it it says okay well if i'm giving if, if we're going to treat this as an enumerable then i'm going to jump over to this one so we do need to cast that in order for that to work I honestly, so like I said, we could leave it here and we could have both options. I don't feel like that's strictly necessary. So I'm actually going to remove that. I'm going to keep this option and then I'm just going to, I'm just going to not do it this way. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to prefer this way. Now I actually only need one. And so now we, I, I say I'm preferring it, but even, even still here, like just looking at this, just looking at this, this is more complicated code than if we had just passed in a single character. The only reason I think I'm willing to tolerate this is because I know where this is going to go. I know we're going to have parties that have many characters. All right. Um, so with this party, we changed from, and I we can, like I said, we, we started, the first code we wrote was we just create new whatever. And then we said, well, what if we pass it in and let somebody else supply those to us? Uh, wh while we're on this topic, before I go away from it totally, let's look at some of the other things that we could do here. Like we could, we could supply those things as a part of a method. Now that makes sense if the, if the, the only place that it's used is within a single method or something like that. Uh, that is a good way to get it in there. Um, in this case, I don't know if, I don't know if that makes sense because really the party kind of owns the characters. Like it's, it like sits over the top of the characters. So it doesn't really make sense to have a method that, um, it doesn't really make sense to have a method that like supply, that like you get the characters as a method parameter and that's it. But there is in here, this supplying the reference via property or method. So we could like, we could say instead of supplying it here, we could, you know, make a setter here and allow somebody to set the characters uh, from the outside. So in, if we're, if, if we were doing that, then maybe down in here, you just say heroes is equals new party and then heroes dot characters equals new list. So that's another possibility. For me, the catch is that this leaves open the possibility that we forget to like set it up. I, 
if it's needed, if we need a list of characters to do anything useful, I would just assume supply it in the constructor unless there's a compelling reason not to. So for me, the, the like supplying it like after the fact and like an initialize method or a, something like that, it, it, there, there's a place for that, but it's not like I, I only do that if the constructor version doesn't work and here it does. So I think that's what we want to do. Um, there's also an option in here that says ask another object. So if there was some other object out there that knew that knew how to get us get us a reference to the object, we could do that. We don't there's no other object that's managing the monsters that belong in a in a party right now. So I I don't think like that's not super useful, but this shows you the example of it where this says I need these asteroids. And I'm the game has the asteroids and I'm aware of the game. So I'm going to ask the game to give me the asteroids and then I'll work with them from there. So that is another option, um, a, a static member, like this kind of thing where we can just, there's, if it's static, then we can grab it from anything like this right here. We just go to the game that's static and we just find the place where it's at out there and just grab it. So there's a lot of options in, in terms of getting stuff, but the typical, honestly, the things that are most common are just calling a constructor passing in the reference for the th the guy you're supposed to collaborate with as a constructor parameter, or if you only need it for a method, then sometimes that's just supplied as a method parameter. And then so the other options are kind of secondary. So, all right. So having said that, the logic that we had for the logic that we had for the starting character for like pushing this out a level, and, and saying, let's have the party just, we're just going to have somebody give us the, the, the collection of characters to use. And in this case, we push that up just one level to, to here. We could make the same argument here. Like right now, the only battle that we need is exactly here, what we've got, got shown. But, but sh could we push this up a level? So like we, like in my mind, I think we could do something like party, um, we could say, look, I'm expecting whoever is creating the battle to supply the battle with the parties that are involved in it. And then we just, we just get those two parties, set them into our properties so that we can use them in the run method here, which we'll get to in a moment. And now we're pushing that out a level. So now this battle, it no longer has it requires now passing into parties. So we're just going to shift all of this out a level. And then we'll just pass those in. Now, one thing that I do want to sort of point out here, because this is a very common paradigm, especially in this kind of scenario where we're passing stuff into the constructors, this right here, our main method, it ends up, um, it's it's the um, Avengers assemble method. This is the thing that says, okay, I want to run a battle. What do I need to to gather up here in order to do it? And and while a lot of other things don't have to know the details of how everything's hooked up, this main method, um, in order to assemble the Avengers, it must like it's doing all like all of the new like the way we've got this right now. Every new keyword is right here in main. So the main method kind of like, it knows all the dirty details about how everything gets assembled. It's the thing that says, okay, if I'm going to make, if I'm going to make a hero party and I'm going to put a skeleton in it and inside of a, this list, and then I'm going to have that party and I'm going to make a monster one. that's going to have a skeleton and a list and a party. And then I'm going to make a battle that combines that, those heroes and those monsters. And then once it's all set up, I will tell the thing to go off and run. So this is kind of just like, it, it gathers together all the pieces and glues everything together. And that is a very common paradigm where the main method is your Avengers assemble method and um, gathers up all the bits and pieces and winds up the, the thing and says, you go. <laughs> so that's not the old, like, it's not like all main methods look like that, but it is not at all uncommon to have this type of paradigm where um, the main method does a bunch of this, like, 
summon all the parts and then kick it off and then it'll just go from there. All right, so at this point now, we now our our parties and our battles, like we it'd be really easy now to create a battle with totally different parties, totally different characters all through and through because they're that's just how it's configured. We we just kind of define this is what the battle looks like. And so um, we could make a, a you know a, a second battle down here if we wanted to. And I'm going to delete this in a second, but um, we can definitely have multiple battles now. And now we have the flexibility. Now, we, the way this is set up, any any set of characters, any you know, any parties we could we can define here, and the rest of our code doesn't have to change. So while we didn't like we could have left this as you make a party and you just new skeleton just add that in um that is that like that wasn't very future proof and that's a that's a scary it's a double-edged sword that word uh future proof because i have seen people go nuts adding in all sorts of stuff that nobody cares about in the sake of well but what if in the future so you want to there's a balance there you don't want to go nuts adding stuff just in case in this case, I know for a fact we're going to need parties that are made up of other stuff. That is like, it's not the next thing, but it is very, very soon. So I'm not too worried about, like, this isn't like over-engineered eh, too much. It's, it is for what we're doing right now, but it, it won't be for what we need it to be very, very soon. So I don't feel bad about kind of the extra, slightly extra bits and pieces here. Okay. Um, all right. So we only need one. And we are, we're honestly, we've got a lot of the pieces here. So um, I kind of, I kind of, I, I just noticed this. I think I'm going to change this. I, we have a run method here, run the battle and run an action. I, that was just the first thing that came to my mind. And I don't, th and because of that, because that's what felt intuitive to me, I don't think those names are wrong and maybe it's okay to leave it that way, but Maybe we'll rename this to perform, perform action instead of run. Uh, just, just to kind of avoid a little bit of the confusion. I know I've seen a, just a few places in the book where I, I had methods that are named same things on different object types, kind of like this. I action had a run and battle had a run. And I've seen people kind of get a little confused about, wait, what's going on here? Um, the names, names are only need to be unique within like their context. So, um, it, it's totally fine for the actions to have a run method. It's just, uh, j just for the sake of like keeping things just a little more clear here, let's call that perform instead of run. So per you perform an action and you run a battle. Um, it's a little bit arbitrary. We, we could make this, we could call this fight instead of run. You fight a battle. Okay. Um, we're missing some pieces here still, and the main piece that we're missing is is this right? This run method is the main thing. We need to walk through all of the people, all the characters, and have and get and see what action they want to run. So we we can do for each character in heroes dot characters. Hey, it's already suggesting character dot take turn. That is what we want. This is supposed to return an action. And then once we've got that, then we want to perform that action. So we allow the character to make a choice and then the game itself, the, this battle in this case, it's the thing that says, okay, if Whatever that action is, we're going to run it. Now, this will, like, okay, I'll leave that alone for a second. I have more to say on it. In this case, though, we did say, let me go back to the challenge here really quick. 
we did say that right here, let's see, uh, let's see, the only action that you need to support at this point is doing nothing, skipping a turn. This action is done by displaying text about doing nothing. So we don't have that yet. And so if we're gonna have this do nothing action, all, what this needs to do is console.write line, So I've called this do nothing in, in I call this do nothing in, in code here and in the description in the book. I kind of honestly like the the idea of of this being not do nothing, but like resting. And maybe when we get farther down, maybe uh maybe this resting. So maybe I'm gonna deviate just a little bit from what the book says. Uh Um, so maybe I'll deviate from what the book said and, and, and have this say rested and maybe in a little bit, if we, if I remember, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll change this to be something like, you know, something like that. Once we get to the point where we actually have HP, we, it'll be, a, it'll be a couple more challenges before we've got that. So. Um, yeah, so skeleton rested and regained two HP. So we'll, we'll leave that off for now. Um, but I like that notion of what if everybody, like there's potions that allow you to restore a whole lot of health really quickly, but what if, what if characters had the option to like slowly regain health by resting? So like I said, we'll, we'll leave that off for now. Maybe we'll, but maybe we'll call this that. And then in fact, let's rename this to rest action. Since that's what it, that's what we're calling it. I that, uh, naming things the right thing makes a lot of sense to me. So, okay. Um, this thing here. So the character is supposed to. Uh, we need the character to pick an action, and in this case, there's only one. So return new uh, rest action. Now, if we're gonna do, well, if we're gonna do that, I'm gonna change this to use expression body. Same thing, and honestly, in a little bit, we're gonna be switching it back. Okay. But, so this will just now, the character's always just gonna say, I'm resting, I'm resting, I'm resting. No matter what happens, we're gonna do that. And there's one thing that you are probably not happy with and that is that i'm just saying skeleton rested and we only have skeletons right now but kind of seems like <laughs> we should be getting that name from something else let's do this so the other thing we're missing is console right line something like this we need a it is something like that. And then we run the action. I'm going to, so if you didn't like the fact that this is just always like a hard coded skeleton, you're going to really hate this. Okay. Uh, So now, now all of our characters are called skeleton. We will deal with that in a second because I'm not happy with it. Um, we'll change it. Don't worry. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, at this point, we might be good enough to run this and see what it does. Let's, uh, let's, let's see how much is broken. We're going to run this and we'll, this is going to go nuts. Oh, I just remembered something else that's missing. Uh oh, loading symbols. Something maybe crashed. Oh, no, it didn't. I guess that loading symbols didn't mean anything. So, a uh, couple of things. One, one, we we only got the the skeleton that's in the hero party to run. 
We did not get both of them to run. And two, I expected this to just go forever. The game shouldn't be over yet. Both of those come down to this method here, this run. And so uh, we're only doing the one because we got heroes and monsters. So now it should do both. And now we could also say while, well, really while the battle's not over, but in this case, we, do, we haven't like invented those like win and loss conditions yet. So. So if we do that, now if we run it again, this time it should do this thing. You see, it's just, it's just in this really quick loop. I'm going to let that keep running, but then I'm going to... I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to do console.writeline. Console.writeline. To give it that spacing, we'll do hot reload. It's, I think I've already got that configured to just do it on save. Nope. Oh, right. It only works if you're... I hope they fix that. To me, that feels like a bug. I just changed the method, but it's the method that it happens to be running in. And until I leave the method and come back into it, it won't take that hot reload. In contrast, the other thing I can do, let me undo that so that I'm in sync with stuff, is if I put a breakpoint right here, now the method's been... Hang on, let me see if I can make this work. All right, we're just gonna have to stop it. If if I hadn't, I, th I think I got it out of sync. And I think if I, if it weren't out of sync, then, so basically the code is running a different, the source code that I have here is not, was not the same version as what the running software was aware of. So when I put a breakpoint in there, it didn't stop. Now I can put that breakpoint in here and I can just say console.writeline to give it that spacing between characters I can let this keep running and it will like apply those changes now I've got that gap and then the other that uh, the other thing that was like an optional thing was uh, consider adding a thread dot sleep to slow the game down so we could do that oops let's see if my breakpoint works yep oops I can do thread dot sleep for a second remember that's in milliseconds problem is Problem is it's really hard to see that just because it's it keeps displaying the same. It's just repeated over and over again. Let me start this over. Now you can see it kind of progressing. And even here you can still see that and you can see the graphics bar scrolling before I filled up the whole buffer in the console window, so. So anyway, you can see this game, it's like marching down this. It asks one character to take a turn, then the next, then the other, then the next, and the other, back and forth. Um, so a couple of things that I don't like that we should fix now. And the first is that <laughs> this and this is exactly duplicate code. We should fix that. And one thing about it is, is like maybe we could have the party, like maybe we could just like, shift all this code over to the, the the party class and have it have its own run have it have its own run like a, a part like a run like a so you know pick pick this up and just shift it over and call like heroes dot run and then we would call monsters dot run we could do that 
Um, I'm not sure that I like like I, that. That then shifts the bulk of like the actual like execution of the battle to the party class, which I think could be fine. But I think I would prefer to just make a little private static void run party method in here, and we just hand it the party. I made this static, but I don't know that it needs to be. Anyway, so we'll just stick that in here. We just move that code over and now we just run that party. And now we just call run party and pass in the heroes. Then this is all duplicated. So we just call run party monsters. So this this can be static. It's allowed to be static. And I think if we actually deleted that, it would say, wait, it's not using anything. Yeah, it does not access instance data and can be marked static. So show potential fixes, make static. So we could make it static. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it that way for now. But I, I do think that eventually this stuff is going to need to know it's got, we're going to want to call other methods, maybe in, in battle. I, we don't need that yet, so it's probably okay as it is. But that was a fairly convenient way to remove that duplication. Now, the other thing that I don't like is the fact that we've got this skeleton here and this skeleton here. This one is easy to fix. Um what we can do is we can make this. I think this class can be abstract. We don't need to create a character. We'll always create a more specific type. Um, but what we can do here is we can say, look, we, we expect there to be a name property. But but I'm not gonna define it here. I'm gonna let something else define it. So now I'll just come in here and I'll just say, implement that class. And it just generated this for me because it knew, knew that was what was missing. And here I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna give it skeleton. So now I've gotten rid of that. So the skeleton says its name is skeleton. And that's, that's good enough for, for the moment. And this thing here, so now when we call this name, it will use polymorphism to actually get the overridden version of skeleton, you know, the name to get skeleton instead of just that hard coded thing there. If we didn't want to do that while we're on the topic, like another possibility here is we could make this not abstract. And then we could say, we could say, look, I'm expecting you to give me the name. And then this guy would have to, instead of overriding this, you would have to there. He would just pass in skeleton and then this guy would just save it off. Um, virtual, virtual methods are ever so slightly slower than, than non virtual ones. If performance is like super ultra mega important, to avoid a virtual method or a virtual property and abstract. If you're, if you're using virtual abstract or override, all of those fit in that same category. You, you know, that's going to be a, like a polymorphic call that the, the runtime has to stop and say, okay, which object is this and which version of this method should I actually call? That takes just a little bit longer than just a, a direct method call. However, I am not worried about the performance cost in this particular case. In fact, I'm generally not worried about performance too much in any of this right now. So I'm going to not do it that way. I kind of like having it be set up like that. And yeah, so that should, that, that solves that problem in part. But the other thing we wanted was this right here. So this, this action, the way we've got this set up, he no longer knows what character initiated the action. He, this action has lost the context of where he came from. So 
there are a few things we can do here to solve this. And, and this goes back again, exactly to the conversation we had early on in this video about this, you know, how to collaborate. So, you know, our option, we can create a new object. We can get it passed in as a constructor parameter. We could, we could have the thing passed in as a method parameter. Um, we can ask another object that knows where that object is. We can supply the reference by calling a method or property that's meant to like save it off or a static member. Um, so just kind of working through those solutions. Like this guy could say, you know, just use a, he could just make and make the skeleton. And just do c dot name got my get my dollar sign in here. So we could do that, and now it's actually pulling it from the skeleton class, but it's not pulling. Like this is arbitrary. I got if we if a a different type of character, you know, a spider, did a rest action, then we we're still going to say skeleton rested. So just call it like we don't the object this guy needs to get that data from already exists. And we can't, this guy can't just go create a whole new object and expect it to have any relation to the other one. So um, we could, again, constructor. Another option here is we just pass in. I'm trying to think what to call this. I want to call it performer. Um, I don't love that name. <laughs> I don't hate it either. Um, it, it aligns with this. Uh, I, like I, I could, I thought about just calling it character. It's not, it's, it's kind of bland. It's just character. Uh, but we can do that. Oops. Then underscore. So we could pass it in here. And I think that, I think that I like that option because when this is created, it, it knows what character is doing it. So, and it is this one, it's the character that we're inside of. So I can just pass in this, which will be a reference to a character and, um, you can get it that way. So now he knows where, you know, you know where that character is to get that name. So that, it, that could work. The other possibility though, is that we like another option there was we pass it in as a method parameter. So instead of having this be something that's like saved off as a part of that action forever, we could just pass it in here, which means when we create the action, when we create the action up here, we do not need to pass this in. Instead, this needs the character too. Okay, performer I don't love, but uh, character is pretty bland. Like, could be the owner or the originator might be a better name for it. Um, I don't know. I, any of those, any of those are, I think, fine names. And then the only thing we have to fix here is we need to hand off that character here. Oops which we know like it's, that is this character here that we've been using here. So that's another possibility. Um, and I don't think that's a bad approach either. However, I, I, I honestly kind of like the notion of, I kind of like the way we had it actually. I kind of like having the action be this like, self-contained like go back far enough yeah it's a self-contained like spring-loaded action it's all ready to go it's just waiting you know like a jack-in-the-box waiting to be turned and for it to like spring into action and poof now it's going to happen and the action runs so i kind of like i kind of like that approach i think we're going to have some actions that that are going to have a lot more parameters than just the character like i think some are going to have like an attack is probably going to need the target 
So that could be another parameter here. And then you just kind of have this, this like action here that is just waiting to happen. And actually one of the interesting things about this is in theory, in theory, if you, if we do it that way, we could go very quickly from this like sequential turn-based thing, you know, character one gets it, character two gets it, then, you know, or like, like if we look back at, keep jumping around in here. Suppose we're running this right here. We could have all of these characters each pick an action. And then like, once they've all picked an action, then we resolve them all simultaneously. So it's turn-based, but it's simultaneous. So simultaneous turn-based combat. It's something that we could e really easily do as long as the actions are all these like, they contain all the data they need to just go run. Because otherwise it gets complicated to remember if we're doing it turn, but you know, simultaneous turn-based to remember like which action belonged to who. Not that there aren't ways to solve that. Uh, there definitely are, but. Okay. So now I think we are, I think we're now, I think, I think we're done. I think we have working code and it works for all the right reasons. Um, so this was, this was long. That challenge was 300 experience points, which is, I, I keep, I've been saying this over the last several videos I've done that are boss battles is I think I, I think I underestimated the number of experience points that these deserve. Cause this is, this is, I mean, we wrote, you know, it's 73 lines of code, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six classes. And we made one, two, if you count these lists as an object, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven instances. And had to orchestrate them all and lay out this whole foundation for this game. And um, I don't know, there there is really a lot going on here. Um, and I really, do, in retrospect, this probably deserves easily double the experience points that I had listed. So let's see, these are telling me, well, these are saying to put it in a, namespace i'm going to ignore that for right now these are saying i can leave off the type name which is true maybe it's just my old schoolness showing through i kind of when the type name is short i kind of I, I, I get just a little bit weirded out by just new parentheses it's just a little weird to me uh like i said that's that's more just for I, how many years that wasn't an option in c sharp so maybe I'll leave those alone for the moment. Um, I, I think other places I might have. Anyway, so <laughs> let's wrap up this up. I, I believe we've completed all the things in that challenge. Like I said, this is a very big one. But so what we've done here is we've built the foundation for a whole system. And honestly, I, I said earlier about the, like if you just started with what I have here, like that's a pretty good start to the whole thing anyway. Um, anyway, yeah, so we have we have like this concept of an action that you can perform. We kind of made some decisions here that this action sh would be like spring loaded. It's like it has all the information it needs to just go run it. So we don't have to pass in any parameters. It's just ready to go. In this case, all we really need is that character that started it. Um, but these actions could like because we define that as an interface, like the sky's the limit here about at what types of actions we could have like we we, we could have actions that are an attack. We could have actions that change it to nighttime. And now all of a sudden different people's effects have different, like, like di people, some people's attacks get stronger and other people's attacks get weaker. We could have, um, you know, equipping gear and, and consuming items and reloading and healing and all sorts of crazy things that we could do. And then we have kind of this like nested structure here where we've got characters and characters are assembled into parties and then the parties are assembled into this battle. We only have one, one type of character that like actually like does something. This one's abstract. So we only have one real character, like subtype, one character type that we can actually use. Um, and then there's this right here. That's kind of the meat of the game. Well, these two methods here that this will just loop forever and run the heroes and run the monsters and And then this runs for a single party, it just enumerates through all the characters and 
tells us whose turn it is, asks that character to give us their action, and then runs that action. This is a thing that will change in the future. Right now we're saying, hey, character, what, what action do you want to do? Ultimately, we're going to change that because we want, there are players that are in charge of, like the characters shouldn't make their own choices. The player that's in charge of the party is the thing that should be making that action. So making that determination. Um, but yeah, so we've got all that. And then we have right here, the main method that is, again, our Avengers assemble. That's going to get more complicated before we're done, but that's the thing that gathers up. It creates all of the objects and orchestrates everything together, assembles it, and then kicks it off and gets it to start running. Uh, which is not the only way to do it, but it is a, a, a fairly common way to do it. So I think that is it for this challenge. And um, hopefully that gives people some ideas about how you might approach this. It's Like I said, this is this, this challenge in particular is a pretty big, this is, it's big. <laughs> Even just this alone is big, and we still have a lot more to do in the future to make make more objects and make more classes, and we'll we'll go from here. But we've laid the foundation. This should give us a pretty reasonable point to keep building on, and we will do that in the coming weeks. So thank you for joining me, and I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys soon.